Peter, midway through MBAA 2015, we've been looking at what made news. Let's face it, there's a couple new airplanes on the jet side, not a whole lot of excitement yet because, well, let's face it, those are years off. But one of the airplanes we've been eagerly awaiting for the last year or so has been this DA-62. It's here, it's really pretty. Whoever designed this paint scheme knew what they were doing. But this is an airplane that kind of raises the bar in a number of areas, especially since the four-place market was so saturated with so many airplanes. Now that you're in that six slash seven place market, this thing looks like it could do some really great business. What's the plan? Well, we think this aircraft is a great aircraft, of course. We're very excited about it. It's so good on so many different levels, and we think it'll have different uh, market applications. First and foremost, of course, is owner flown. We have a lot of customers, as you say, that are flying four-seat aircraft. We also have a lot of customers that are flying aircraft such as Cirrus SR-22, high-performance singles, and so forth, that need more capability, more space, more seats more payload capability, and if you're really flying hard IMC going across inhospitable terrain, our approach is to really have a twin-engine piston aircraft because nothing beats continued flight in case of an engine failure. Beyond the private market, we also see potential applications for this aircraft in air taxi business. It's very roomy inside, and with the number of seats that it has, you can now have a basically professional pilot flying the aircraft and have it paying passengers in it. So air taxi, charter, and possibly also as a complement to larger aircraft in a corporate flight department. Many corporate flight departments operate a big business jet. It's a fantastic way to travel, but for shorter distances, going into smaller fields and so forth, this could be a very good complement for that. So we're hoping to make some inroads in that market as well. You had to have learned a lot of lessons with the DA-42 program. What were the major lessons that came out of the 42 that were applied to the 62? Well, one of the things that, of course, we learned with the 42, we really cut our teeth on the diesel engines, the turbo diesel engines with the jet fuel, and we worked with Thielert, which was well known. We're happy that now the assets of that company have been acquired by Continental so that there's ongoing support for those aircraft. The 42 has been, despite of the issues that we had with Thielert going bankrupt in 2008 and losing some production years there, we've delivered almost a 1,000 of those aircraft in the past decade. That makes the DA-42 the best-selling piston twin and the 62 builds on that so everything that the 42 has that's good is inside the 62 plus of course the extra seats the big difference of course with the 62 and all of our products that we have right now that we sell the new aircraft from the factory is that they operate with the austro engine and the austro engine is a proprietary engine it's built by our sister company austro engines in austria and all of the operating experience we gained with uh, hundreds of thousands of operating hours with diesel aircraft has gone into those engines. And the introduction of the Austro in 2009 and the experience we've had through today has been absolutely excellent. The TBO has gone from 1,000 to 1,200 to 1,500 to 1,800 hours. We've got over 1,200 engines in the field. We've got over 600,000 hours on the fleet, and the engine is doing really, really well. So we're very happy to introduce it now to the U.S. market in a big way. True Blue Power Advanced Lithium-Ion Main Chip Batteries feature proprietary nanophosphate technology. They deliver three times the energy density and are more than 40% lighter than lead acid or NICAD alternatives. RTCA tested, FAA certified, available to OEMs today. Speaking of the U.S. market, how is this airplane going to be deployed in the U.S.? What's the production rate look like initially? Where are we going to see them? And what's the overall plan for the first year or two of deployment? Um, what we're hoping for in 2016, we want to be a little bit conservative in terms of the numbers. I think all of the manufacturers that suffered through the downturn in 2008 don't want to go through something like that again. So really we want to use the aircraft to promote sales, get orders for the aircraft, and then fulfill those orders. So from that perspective, we're actually taking a conservative approach. We have planned to sell about 25 units in 2016. What 17 look like then? We'll see based on 2016 how the market develops, but basically we're comfortable producing this aircraft at a rate of about one per week. And so that means about 50 aircraft. If the market demands more, we can ramp up production. If the market demands less, quite frankly, we can ramp down production a little bit as well. But we think we're comfortable with 50 units a year worldwide, of which half will go into the U.S. 
Well, one of the things that's impressive when you look at the airplane, even though you've got a price tag now a little bit north of a million, is that the operating economics are still very compelling under the circumstances. You've got a machine that can basically loiter around at fuel rates that would normally be, in some cases, half of the single engine competition. And at the same time, you've got a top end pushing 200 knots. That's correct. I mean, this is one of the features of all of our aircraft, whether it's the DA-40 single that we have over there, the DA-42 or the DA-62. The DA-42, for example, in a flight training environment such as Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University that operates it in Prescott, they've averaged over the last four years 10.4 gallons an hour total for a twin aircraft. That's remarkable. And you get the similar economics in the DA-62. So the operating cost is extremely low. You can cruise at very good speeds, 170, 180, and be burning a total of 14, 15, 16 gallons an hour. And as you say, the aircraft pushes 200 knots, but it's very, very frugal. The other thing that's important is it's jet fuel. It's less of a concern in the U.S. where Avgas is still widely available. But of course, there's still the question, what is going to happen with Avgas? And it's lead-containing fuel. The jet fuel, of course, is not. And in most areas, the jet fuel is also cheaper. So not only are we burning less fuel, we're burning a cheaper fuel, so really it's a win-win. Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. On the rest of the product line, are there any plans at this point for any alteration to the DA-40 uh, platform and might we see other airplanes in the pipeline? Well, in North America, we've traditionally sold the Lycoming Power DA-40, and that aircraft is still available for customers that would like the Lycoming, but at this point, with the experience that we have with the Austro engine, and also, quite frankly, the positive exchange rate developments between the Euro and the US dollar, it's realistic for us to be promoting the diesel-powered DA-40 in North America, and we have here the aircraft on display with a Tundra gear, which is a recreational aircraft, a lot of fun, can land off-field and in rough terrain, but also also for flight training and private use, it takes all of the positive attributes of the DA-40 and then marries it with the turbo diesel engine. And this aircraft flies at an average flight training operation fuel burn of five gallons an hour, which is remarkable. I mean, that's something that you normally see out of a small LSA or our own two-seat DA-20. So to have that in an IFR full-blown four-seat aircraft is really remarkable. So we have the DA-40. The DA-42 is the latest version, the Dash 6, which has a lot of improvements. So it's pushing 200 knots also the performance has increased substantially with that we have basically three new models that we're promoting in the u.s and i think for 2016 that's enough of course diamond is always developing new products and our colleagues in austria are working on turboprop single a large uh, single based on the same fuselage as this and uh, we hope to introduce those products in future as well diamond has made some really tough decisions uh frankly uh a lot faster in some cases than some of the competition who really was hoping for better things and obviously got disappointed. But it seems like there's a sense of str or a strong survival instinct at, at uh, Diamond at this point, but more important, really good planning uh, for the worst that the industry's handed us. Are we prepared or do you see a time when you're going to be able to look at a significant expansion again, especially into some of the projects that were near and dear to your heart? Uh, you're indirectly referring to the DJET. The DJET project, of course, is something that is near and dear to our hearts, and we hope that we can still attract a financial partner that will help us finish the aircraft. It's a great aircraft, but we're not able to finish that aircraft on our own. At this point, with the market still being at the same level that it dropped down to for the piston aircraft in late 2008, so basically the major piston manufacturers delivering approximately a thousand or less than a thousand units a year, we have to be conservative, of course. And absolutely, it takes long-term vision and it takes perseverance to be in this business. We have that and we continue working in that business and continue innovating and definitely would like to revive the DJ at some point, but at this point we're unable to do so on our own. We do continue to talk to people that are potentially interested in partnering with us, and it's something I'd still like to very much see 
finished in future. So would we. We wish you the best of luck. Peter, we appreciate it. We're uh, midway through MBAA 2015. Best of luck. Thanks very much, Jim. Thanks.